Yo, so this is part two, part two, part two of uh, Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. So if you haven't watched the video about part one, uh, go and do that. I've linked it, I've uh, written it up as Viktor Frankl, Man's Search for Meaning, part one. So this is part two, and we'll start with a quote. To invoke an analogy, consider a movie. It consists of thousands upon thousands of individual pictures, and each of them makes sense and carries a meaning. Yet the meaning of the whole film cannot be seen before its last sequence is shown. However, we cannot understand the whole film without having first understood each of its components, each of the individual pictures. Isn't it the same for life? Doesn't the final meaning of life too reveal itself, if at all, only at its end, on the verge of death? And this also reminds me of the quote, the Steve Jobs quote, which is like, you can't connect the dots looking forward, you can only connect the dots looking back. And also, I kind of had this kind of idea when I was writing a short story, writing it just stage by stage, without a plan, just improvised storytelling and I realised that every scene that I wrote stru uh, uh, framed the previous scenes that I had already written in a different light so every new scene gave additional value to the scenes that were that came previously and that is what happens with life because you might think that you could look back on your past now as an older, wiser person and have different insights and different thoughts about what it was that happened. So something that happened when you were maybe 13 that stressed you out and triggered you and caused you a lot of emotional pain. For example, I don't, um, I don't know, whatever it was, but you, you could now look back on that and see it in a different light and see that... Uh, you, uh, you shine a whole new perspective on it. Another example, um, if, for example, when you're going into puberty and a girl says something or, or a guy says something to you and uh, you take it in the wrong way, maybe you think, oh, they don't like me. That's how you took it at the time. When you grow older and you get more secure, you now look back on it and you go, oh, they didn't mean it like that at all. It was me who took it the wrong way. So the wisdom that you gain as you mature changes the way you perceive your past. It brings new light to the things in your past. So therefore you might think a certain meaning, your life means something now at this point. But as you get older, when you look back on this moment, this moment could have a very different meaning than you think it actually does. And that's the point. The point is that the meaning is only revealed when you're gone. So you're trying to find this meaning, you're trying to find this meaning, but the meaning is constantly evolving as you're getting older, and the meaning that you think it has will be a very, very different meaning than the you that's looking 10 years older, looking back at what that meant to you when you were 10 years older, which also will change when you're 20 years older, and you will look back on the you that's 10 years younger, looking back on the you that's 10 years younger, who believed that it was this meaning. Then it becomes, oh, it's actually this meaning. And then it becomes, oh, it's actually this meaning. And that's very similar to what David Mamey, I think it's Mamey, says he's the playwright, the playwriter who wrote uh, American Buffalo and uh, Glenn, Glary, Glenn, Glenn Ross, but he, he has this trick that he uses in his stories, which is the razor blade, and it's like, start with the character using a knife, not the razor blade, it's a knife, start with the character using a knife to cut bread. Later on, the character uses the knife to have a shave. Later on, obviously, the character uses the same knife to kill somebody, so that knife has these different meanings through the story. So the meaning you think it has now is a different meaning later on and a different meaning later on. So the meaning is always changing and you can only really put the meaning on that, that life when it's, when it's over, when it's all been and gone. And even then, other people will 
take the meaning from that individual life and evolve it and develop it and it's all conceptual and it's all changing at every minute so just thought that was a cool part of the book then there's this cool bit about actually growing older and it's about there's a pessimistic attitude and then there's a activistic attitude so the pessimist will take a calendar and rip the days off and go there's another day gone another day is over I'm getting older but the activist will say well I've lived every day to the full and I've built up a collection of memories so take this calendar sheet off the wall and I fold it up nicely and I put it in my diary and I write a few notes about it I've collected it so now that when I get older I actually have a collection of days to look back on and go wow look at everything I've done look at all of the experiences I've had look at the life that I've lived and so instead of being jealous of the youth who has a whole future ahead of him you're actually very grateful for the life that you have behind you so it's that different flip of when you're young and going I have so much potential or when you're old you go look at all of the things that I've done look at all of the memories that I've had look at all of the experiences that I've lived and that I've built this wonderful collection of life that I've that I've lived and I'm grateful and I am very excited and happy to have that um which is a kind of, it's just a really nice, you know, mental flip, a different perspective on how you can look at your life, uh, which is fantastic. And I'm going to read you another quote from the book. So I'm going to start there. I wish to stress that the true meaning of life is to be discovered in the world rather than within man or his own psyche, as though it were a closed system. I've termed this constitu constitutive characteristic the self-transcendence of human existence. It denotes the fact that being human always points to something or someone other than oneself, be it a meaning to fulfill or another human being to encounter. The more one forgets himself by giving himself to a cause to serve or another person to love, the more human he is and the more he actualizes himself. What is called self-actualization is not an attainable aim at all, for the simple reason that the more one would strive for it, the more he would miss it. In other words, self-actualization is possible only as a side effect of self-transcendence, which just destroys Maslow's hierarchy of needs, self-actualization. <laughs> which is true because it's, it's the same thing that um, I believe uh, Aldous Huxley talks about I think uh, in some of his essays on enlightenment, and it's it's like you got to move out of your own way. There's like a light that shines, but you are blocking it, and so your ego, you, your desire to self-actualize, stands in the way of that light. And stops that light from shining. So you have to get out of your own way. So in other words, when you transcend the self, as a byproduct of that, you can self-actualize. But first you have to forget about self-actualizing and think about self-transcendence, which is coming away from the ego. And it's instead of finding meaning within your psyche, it's finding meaning in the world around you, which is a just absolutely fantastic point. So he calls this form of um, psychotherapy logotherapy. Logo is, I think, from the Greek. It, it's, it has the Greek meaning. Of, it, the Greek meaning is literally meaning. So it's like meaning therapy. So it's like the desire to. It's therapy based around finding meaning. What is the meaning in your life? Um, there's another thing he says about there's three things and I think I mentioned it in part one it's um, uh, this is uh, achievement um, love and search for meaning I th oh, 
But I was thinking about this. No, that is exactly what I was thinking of. I was thinking of because when you grow up, you're like, you have this really strong sexual desire and you're thinking, oh, I need a girlfriend or, oh, I've got to shag and shag and shag and shag and shag. Um, you can find the meaning in something like your addiction of sex where you think that's the meaning or the more common one is money. Everyone is driven towards money, 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 money. And they think that money is the meaning, but meaning is the meaning essentially you're we have this core drive to earn money and gain status this core drive to find a sexual partner but we also and what's interesting is we have this core drive to find meaning and that is naturally within us as human beings is like this meaning desire desire for meaning which because it's a desire, uh, we are going to follow that path whether we like it or not. We are all driven by our desires. And one of those desires is the desire for meaning. Um, and our bodies will naturally try to carve out a path, which is a very cool and interesting concept. Um, so yeah, we're fighting for money, we're fighting for partners, but we're also fighting for meaning. There's a... Yeah, it was just very fascinating for me to um, to read about that and to come to that conclusion in my own mind. And I'm going to finish on this quote. What never can be ruled out is the unavoidability of suffering. In accepting this challenge to suffer bravely, life has a meaning up to the last moment, and it retains the meaning literally to the end. In other words, life's meaning is an unconditional one, for it even includes the potential meaning of unavoidable suffering. So, I think it was back to what I said in part one, where we talked about tragic optimism which was having that optimistic attitude despite all of the challenges and the suffering going on about you so no matter what you accepted the challenge to suffer it nobly and bravely and face every difficult situation with an optimistic attitude and that in itself gives life an incredible amount of meaning um, which you could say it was like never give up never quit never surrender but um, it's not really is it it's just because uh, you can quit you can give up some things you probably best give up and quit I've done that myself um, because I understood that those situations were not for me but it's the ability to understand that currently there is a bad situation but to know that what gives life meaning is facing that situation with a noble and optimistic attitude uh, which is just a great note to end on isn't it really so I hope that you've come to your own conclusions from watching this video and I wish you the best of luck with your personal search for a source of meaning and I really suggest that you read this book because you're going to find out about the situations that Viktor Frankl went through when he was in the concentration camps which is very interesting in itself and then if you're interested in finding meaning and coming to your own conclusions about what this life is that we're living in then you're going to love the uh, second part about logotherapy and I think that's going to give you some strong insights so keep reading uh, keep searching and I'll see you in another video